Hello, my name is Bridget, and today we are going to be talking about A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. It was fantastic. Oh my gosh, if you have not picked this up, I don't even know what you're doing. This has been all over booktube recently, ever since it came out, and it has so much hype, and I definitely think it deserves the hype because it was glorious and fantastic in my opinion. This book was amazing. Oh my gosh, go pick it up if you have not. But if you somehow have not heard the premise of this book. Basically, there are these four parallel Londons. There's Grey London, which is basically our London, and it happens in the 1800s, I think. So Grey London is basically our London. It doesn't have any magic. It's very sort of dollish, and it doesn't have any magic, as I've already said. And that is where one of the main characters, Delilah Bard, is from, or Lila. And she is a thief, and she is just so, Awesome! You guys got to read it to know what I'm talking about. But anyway, then there is Red London, which is the one that our main character, Kel, is from. And Kel is this awesome main character who is a magician, and Antari, which is this blood magician, and there's only two of them in the whole thing, in the, their whole world, like in the whole, out of all of the worlds, there's only two of them and he is one of them, so he can travel between these parallel Londons. And he is awesome! I just, I love Kel, I love his coat! It's just glorious, as I've already said. Red London is flourishing, and it has magic and balance and everything, and then there is White London, which is in chaos, and everyone's fighting for power, they all want magic, because magic means power, and if you have power, then that's better, and you just, it's cutthroat, you've got to, you gotta fight your way to the top. And then there is Black London, which, which is the dead London, which, which has been destroyed and is basically the nightmare of everyone because the magic took over and it destroyed all the people and the other Londons have sealed themselves off away from this Black London. Kel is basically a smuggler. He has this bad habit of smuggling things and you're not supposed to take things from parallel Londons into the other Londons, but Kel has this habit of doing so and he ends up taking something he is not supposed to, and then it is stolen from him. And that is all I'm gonna tell you about it without spoiling you. It is a fantastic book. You should definitely go pick it up if you have not been swayed already by what I've already said. So I'm going to get into my rating of this book now. So the characters I gave a 20 out of 20 or one star. The characters were all very strong in their own ways, and they changed so much over the course of the whole story. They were so well done, it was fantastic and amazing. Victoria Schwab, that was fantastically done. Then there was plot, and I gave that a 20 out of 20 or another star. Plot was glorious. I loved every second of it. I didn't want to put it down for one second. I just wanted to keep reading and keep reading and keep reading the whole entire time I was reading this book. And since it is the Duodecathon, I was able to keep reading. And I was just so happy. I was like, I gotta keep reading this book. I gotta finish it. It's just, oh my god. Setting, I gave a 20 out of 20 or another star. I could really picture everything in this story. And there were certain paragraphs that enhanced the story and told you more about the setting and it was just amazingly done. I will read you one of those paragraphs later that I absolutely loved. It was very well done. It was fantastically made. Like she made this whole setting and this whole world and it was so amazingly done, you just, it's fantastic. Writing, I gave a 20 out of 20 or another star. It sucked me in and I just wanted to keep reading the whole time and I didn't want to stop. The story was really well done and I cannot wait for the next book in this duology. My enjoyment was a 20 out of 20 or another star. Can you tell? I absolutely loved this book. Can you? Can you? It was glorious and amazing and I don't really have the words to express how much I loved this book. This book was amazing. It is probably one of the best books I've read so far this year. It was just... Go read it. So overall, I gave it a 100% or 5 out of 5 stars. This book was so amazing, and I know I just keep saying that, but oh my god, that book, it, it was so good. Go read it. Okay, so if you have not read this book, definitely go pick it up. I don't know what you're waiting for. Go pick it up, and then come back and we can discuss it together. So if you haven't read it, I'm gonna go spoil you, so you should probably leave so you don't get spoiled. And I'll see you when you come back after you've read this book. Okay, bye! Okay, this book, this book, guys. 
So from the start, you get this picture of Kel in his coat. And his coat has thousands of sides with so many amazing features because of his magic. And I just love Kel's coat. Can we take a moment to appreciate Kel's coat? It was glorious and fantastic. And I want his coat. Just so bad. I just want that coat. Okay, another thing is that it's really interesting that Kel doesn't remember the first five years of his life. And he doesn't know his name other than Kel, which comes from the initials on his knife, the KL. So it's KL, Kel. That was really interesting to me and how he doesn't remember that and how he just came up with the name based off the letters on the knife. And I, it makes me wonder what happened to him during those first five years that he doesn't remember. Like, we're missing this whole five years of his life that we don't know about. And I'm wondering if that's going to come into play in the next book in this duology. Now I'm just going to read you guys a paragraph that I absolutely loved. It was really descriptive. I felt like it told you about the story really well. It says on page 86, Power and balance, balance and power, equal parts motto, mantra and prayer. The words ran beneath the royal emblem in Red London and could be found in, in shops and homes alike. People in Kel's world believed that magic was neither an infinite resource nor a base one. It was meant to be used but not abused, wielded with reverence as well as caution. White London had a very different notion. Here, magic was not seen as equal. It was seen as something to be conquered, enslaved, controlled. Black London had let magic in, let it take over, let it consume. In the wake of this city's fall, White London had taken the opposite approach, seeking to bind power in any way they could. Power and balance became power and dominance. Those two paragraphs, they just really encaptured those Londons and their separate Londons and their separate thoughts and their thought pro processes and their ways. And I really liked that about that because it gave you a clear picture. These people believe in power and balance. These believe in power and dominance. They cannot let it control them or else they will have the same thing that happened to Black London happen to them. And it just gave the whole world more depth and it really made you fall into the story and see what's going on and know what's going on because you know the backstories of these Londons and you know how they react to things and you know why they feel these ways. Okay, another thing I really, really, really wanted to talk about with you guys was they're talking and Tiran says that she has power, that Lila has power and then he asks about her eye and is Lila Antari? Like, cause she doesn't have an eye so that could have been the ma black magical eye and since she's from Grey London, she could be the Grey London Antari and they could have just removed the black eye that was her black magical eye, like you know how Kel has the eye? Well, that could have been her eye and that's why she has a fake one and oh my god, is this gonna be a plot line in the next story? Oh my god, I'm so excited. So I'm just gonna read you that scene from the book because that was, oh my god, shocking. I read it and I was like, oh my god, is she the Antari from Grey London? Okay. How did you lose it, he asked. Lila frowned. Lose what? His weathered fingers drifted up beneath her chin. Your eye. Lila pulled her face from his grip, her hand going to the darker of her two brown eyes. The one made of glass. Few people ever noticed. Her hair cut a sharp line across her face. And even when she did look someone in the eye, they rarely held the gaze for long enough to mark the difference. I don't remember, she said. It wasn't a lie. I was a child and it was an accident, I'm told. Hmm, said Tiran pensively. Does Kel know? Her frown deepened. Does it matter? After a long moment, the old man tilted his head. I suppose not, he said. And Tiran had said that Lila had power, just that it was uncultured and unnerved, so she hadn't used it yet. So, what if she's the Antari from Grey London? Like, could that be a plot line in the next book? Oh my gosh. Ah! And there's one more thing I would like to discuss with you guys. And it was just that conversation at the end. I really just really enjoyed that. So Lila and the prince are talking, and... Just saying, I love Rai. Rai is like fantastic. He's such an awesome character. He, I love his friendship with Kel and how they are like brothers and just that whole relationship. It really meant a lot because you knew how much they felt for each other, like deep their bond went. And he's just really, he has some great lines in this book. So I love this conversation between him and Lila. Rai held up his hand. You are surely not an intrusion, he said pushing himself up in the bed. Though I fear I, you've met me rather out of my usual state of grace. Do you have a name? Delilah Bard, she said. We've met before, and you looked worse. Rye laughed silently. I apologize for anything I might have done. I was not myself. 
I apologize for shooting you in the leg, said Lila. I was myself entirely. Rye broke into his perfect smile. I like this one, he said to Kel. Can I borrow her? And just, oh my gosh, Lila, she is such an awesome character. She's just not taking anything from anyone. Yeah, I shot you in the leg, but that was entirely me, so, you know, I don't have any excuses for it, and I don't feel bad for it at all. And Rye just, I love his character, because you know those types of characters in books, and he, he's just fantastic. That is all I have to say for today about A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I absolutely loved it, it was fantastic and amazing. I cannot wait for the next book in the duology. What did you guys think of this book? Did you love it as much as I did? What were your favorite parts? And what did you think of the whole thing? Let me know down in the comments, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye!